Okay, this screencast is dedicated to uh, essential knowledge 2D4 for AP Biology. Essentially, that's uh, the immune system. And there are various forms of immune system depending on how complex of an organism you are, uh, ranging from very basic, uh, things that you might see in invertebrates, to more complex, uh, like you would see in, like in mammals, um, and everything in between. Keep in mind, though, that these immune systems uh, are basically... Immune systems are basically ways that organisms uh, keep and maintain uh, homeostasis. So in a constantly changing environment, uh, you're constantly under attack by other organisms. Uh, if you're an invertebrate, you could be infected by bacteria, viruses, just as uh, mammals can. Uh, so to maintain that balance, that homeostasis, you need a system uh, to, to, uh, to prevent those attacks from becoming deadly. Okay, that's what, that's what the immune system does. Depending on how complex an organism you are, you can have either a very basic innate immunity uh, shown here, where basically external barriers and very generic inter internal defenses help maintain homeostasis. This is seen in, 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 in vertebrates, basic uh, level of defense in plants. Up into uh, vertebrates, and especially mammals, where uh, you see the presence of adaptive immunity. This is immunity that's constantly changing based on uh, the exposure an organism has to uh, things such as viruses, uh, bacteria, other microorganisms that shouldn't be in uh, in your cells. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about innate immunity and adaptive immunity and how both of these uh, maintain homeostasis. The first most basic type of immunity is innate immunity. Essentially, it relies on um, external barriers and generic internal defenses. So for a lot of invertebrates, a lot of insects, you'll see uh, a tough exterior exoskeleton uh, that, that is sort of like the, the organism's armor preventing a puncture. Okay, so this exoskeleton uh, blocks things from getting inside the hemolymph, inside um, the, the cellular environment. Should an organism get into that cellular environment, uh, the, the internal environment is generally acidic, so it's inhospitable to, to life for, say, a bacterium. Um, it wouldn't be happy in that environment. Um, also, as a barrier, you see various secretions. Um, many uh, simple organisms have mucous membranes that secure mucus uh, as a thick barrier, basically, from getting inside uh, and access to the cells. In addition, hairs and cilia also act to uh, sort of sweep away uh, unwanted microorganisms or, or, or invading organisms. Now, should the uh, exterior barrier or these various um, secretions be uh, breached and, and get, gotten into the cells. Uh, there are sort of ge generic defenses against um, um, invasive organisms. Uh, phagocytic cells are basic cells that can engulf uh, indiscriminately against uh, invaders. Natural killer cells uh, can destroy uh, potential invaders. In addition, you see sort of generic dis uh, responses, defensive proteins, inflammatory response prevents organism, organisms from living inside other organisms. Uh, as you become more complex, certainly in the vertebrates, uh, there's an adaptive immunity. So based on what you're exposed to, say you're exposed to a certain virus, uh, your body has a way of remembering and preparing for future attacks by that organism, okay? So adaptive immunity is essentially upon being exposed to such things, your immune system gets better at dealing with it and in the future will deal with it um, more robustly. Okay, everybody's experienced this in one form or another. Certainly as kids, before you go to school, you're vaccinated for certain things. Um, every year, a lot of us get flu shots. Essentially what vaccinations are doing, um, these immun uh, immunizations are starting that adaptive immune response. They're, they're giving you weakened or dead strains uh, of these potential uh, invasive organisms uh, and allowing your body to to acquire adaptive immunity to those so that should you be exposed to an actual um, say virus uh, your your body has a, st a head start in defending against that okay so we'll talk about that again in a minute let's speak to a minute about uh, for a minute about plant non-specific immune responses so plants uh, when exposed to thing like fungi or or, or bacteria they have generic pathogen recognition receptors, so they're, they're trained to 
recognize general classes of proteins on a fungus or on a bacterium. And in doing so, we'll trigger a response wherein the cell actually makes antimicrobial substances. So these things are called antimicrobial peptides that uh, sort of generically attack and, 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 and kill fungus or bacteria that don't belong inside the plant cell. Now, should that fail, the plant also has a, a, a plan B, if you will, wherein uh, it'll just go into a um, cell death mode. Okay, so it'll trigger basically a, a, a cell death wherein the cell that's infected will be uh, put to death and, and actually sometimes the surrounding cells just in case will also um, essentially be killed to protect all the other cells in the plant. Okay, so plants deal with uh, infections that way. They don't really have an adaptive immunity, but they have that sort of baseline generic um, immunity that we talked about, the nonspecific innate immunity. Moving on to specific immune responses that you see in mammals, uh, there's a whole host of cells that have evolved to deal directly with uh, cells that are that are being presented as uh, invade, invasive. Okay, so uh, if a cell is infected in an organism, essentially it'll get chopped up by that organism. And a lot of times, what you'll see are these receptors that that present the uh, antigens. Essentially, so these are for lack of better words, chunks of the, the invasive organism, uh, they, are, they are presented on these receptors and there are cells in the um, adaptive immune, uh, in, in, in the adaptive immunity response that um, can respond to, um, to foreign cells and um, essentially kill the infected cells. So right here you see a, a white blood cell, a cytotoxic T cell that engages in uh, direct cell-to-cell -cell contact with that infected cell can essentially sense this triangular um, antigen being given to it as a foreign antigen not belonging there. And essentially what that cytotoxic T cell does is it, um, it releases uh, through a pore enzymes that promote apoptosis in the cell that's presenting the foreign, an foreign antigen. Okay, so essentially the cytotoxic T cell is uh, targeting the cell that's infected for destruction. Um, and so basically those enzymes will kill that cell and the cytotoxic T cell will go on and look for more of these antigens that do not belong inside the organism. So that's an example of cell mediated response. If you're, you're thinking about cell communication, this is an example of cell to cell contact that's uh, setting in motion the actual killing of the infected cell. Moving on to another form of specific immune response, this adaptive immunity, uh, is, is the humoral response involving B cells. Okay, B cells are a critical part of the adaptive immune system. Uh, you have many different types of B cells um, in the immune system. So see here you see B cells that have a certain type of receptor. So here it's this light greenish receptor, here it's the purple receptor, here it's a light blue receptor. So you have uh, very few uh, B cells, but you have a variety of them. So you'll see several of these types of cells waiting to sense specific antigens that, that will match up with their receptors and trigger, trigger uh, an immune response. So see here, this antigen right here um, fits the purple receptor and it's going to set into uh, action a chain of events that um, boosts the immune system to respond to this foreign antigen molecule. So what happens here is uh, Antigen responds with the, the receptors at the surface um, of the B cell. And due to that exposure, the uh, cells will be activated where the B cells start to multiply. So you make more of B cells containing the receptor to that particular antigen. Some of those cells go on to become effector cells and will secrete that specific antibody that can bind to that specific antigen. And what I want to point out to you here at this red arrow is that these effector cells that secrete the antibodies are loaded with ER. Now stop and think for a minute about the endomembrane system, right? These are, these are uh, cells that are going to be making proteins um, that are secreted, right? So they, they are made by ribosomes on the ER. They're passed to the Golgi and secreted outside the cell. So these proteins, these antibodies, are released. Next slide, I'll show you what they do. Another por uh, population of those cells 
uh, become memory cells. So they sit around and basically wait uh, for the next time this antigen comes along. So not all the cells stick around and wait. That would be somewhat wasteful um, energetically. And, and uh, But basically some of these memory cells lie around dormant waiting for another exposure. And sure enough, when that, that second exposure comes along, you see an even uh, more robust response. Okay, so this little sort of army lying in wait is going to make even more uh, effector cells that secrete more antibodies and will create ultimately more memory cells. So what about those uh, antibodies though? What exactly do they do to enhance immunity? Well, let's take a quick look at one of these, um, one of these uh, antibodies. Uh, if you take an up close look at the antigen binding sites on it, you'll see that it's, that it's highly specific. Um, that antigen is, is sort of lock and key in that one antigen fits that one specific antigen binding site. So these antibodies are very specific. Uh, once an antibody binds uh, a foreign uh, substance, such as a virus or a, or a bacterium that doesn't belong, uh, it can do one of several things. Essentially, it neutralizes it by, um, by binding to it, immobilizing it. Um, if there's a lot of bacteria and a lot of antibodies, basically it'll make um, the, uh, the bacteria sort of clot up, um, triggering an a, a, a agglutination response. Uh, and once that happens, other immune cells, such as this macrophage, can come and engulf the foreign bacteria or the foreign virus and get rid of it, get it out of the uh, organism system. Okay. Another interesting thing that could happen is if you're tagged by an antibody, say on the cell surface of that foreign invading cell, things called complement molecules can come and bind, and it's really interesting. They um, they form pores, right? So they're they're protein uh, components that form a pore. And essentially what happens is once you form a pore, uh, contents of that cell can leak out, contents can come in, essentially that cell is going to lice or explode. Okay, so um, that's basically what antibodies do and why having lots of antibodies that recognize specific antigens is a very valuable thing for an organism. So going back to immunization antibody production, uh, it's, it's important for an organism to get that adaptive immunity going. Uh, that's why you want to give them the weakened strain so they can start producing antibodies to deal with it and have a robust response should they see that antigen again. Um, and things evolve, so you have to go back and update your shots. Uh, every year we have to do a flu shot because the flu virus um, mutates and changes. It evolves pretty rapidly. Last but not least, I want to show you a system that's, that's pretty neat. It involves a little bit of both. So it's a little bit of humoral response. It's a little bit of cell-mediated response. So essentially there are these cells... Um, these specialized macrophages that consume things, uh, break them down. So here's a macrophage breaking down a microbe and basically their uh, formation of receptors that can then take that broken down chunk of the microbe, those antigens of the, of the microbe, and present them to the outside world. So here if you're moving down the line, you see a macrophage here uh, presenting non-self complex. So it's an antigen presenting cell. It's presenting antigen uh, to the immune system uh, for assistance in destroying that particular foreign invader. Okay, so how does this work? Well, again, you have a cell-to-cell -cell contact here with something called a helper T cell. So the helper T cell has receptors that can sense that non-self and do one of two things. It can stimulate uh, the B cell, so it'll stimu stimulate that humoral immune response and, and, and stimulate that B cell to uh, secrete antibodies to that antigen and to make memory cells to remember that particular antigen. And it can also stimulate the cell-mediated immune response, stimulating cytotoxic T cells to feed back and target that antigen-presenting cell uh, for destruction, basically the same way we did as we talked about before. Basically, um, we'll, we'll uh, target it with enzymes that, that trigger cell death, okay? Um, so that's basically some, some really, the immune system is actually really, really complicated. That's sort of like a basic understanding of it. The real key thrust here is to understand that these cells work together to maintain homeostasis in a changing environment, okay? So you're, the cell's not always gonna be sitting pretty. It's gonna be under attack a lot by foreign uh, organisms and viruses and the immune system helps it stay healthy so that it can survive and thrive, okay? 
it'll keep that organism going, especially if you're, you're a mammal. Okay, I hope that helps.